cats being groomed by monkeys? Well, this sure isn't something you see every day. Unless you happen to work at the Bambalela Vervet Monkey Rehab Center in South Africa. I haven't really seen that before with cats in an enclosure. The cat loves it because he's being in heaven, I guess. He feels like a king there, laying, being groomed. So how did this arrangement all come to be? Well, these vervet monkeys arrived here because they were either found injured or orphaned as a result of human conflict. The goal is to get them back to the wild, but for some, this becomes a retirement home. It's a beautiful spot to settle down, but even in captivity, vervet troops have a social hierarchy. There's always some fighting happening. They are very vocal animals. The one screaming, that's just him basically saying, back off. Sounds kind of chaotic, but the top dog, er, uh, monkey, restores order. Rambo's the dominant male, so of course he's gonna fight anybody off. Whenever anybody does anything he doesn't like, he'll give them either a slap or a nip on the bum. Yeah, this place is pretty wild. And then there's the cats. One day, the three cats, they were kittens still. They decided to just join their golden oldies cage and moved straight in there with the 12 monkeys. As kittens, they climbed into the enclosure through underground drainage holes. Each time they were removed, they snuck back in. It's an odd sight, no doubt. But when you get a load of the perks, it starts to make more sense. They would literally go and rub themselves against the monkey or the monkey will sit and groom the cat. Free massage and tick removal? Uh, yes please. As for the monkeys, well, it's well documented that stroking cats helps reduce human stress levels. So maybe it has a similar effect on our fellow primates. A lot of people think because monkeys are grooming, it's because they're looking for fleas. He's not just looking for fleas, that's also friendship he's building with the cat. I don't think the monkey sees them as pets. I think they see them literally part as their troop, as part of their family. Well, ain't that the cutest? And the perks don't stop there. See, the cats are around so much, they're considered residents. Which means free food and universal health care. In this family, everyone gets the same treatment, no matter what species you fall under. And like any tight family, the monkeys protect their own. Caretaker Bupa here thinks that one of the cats might have a weepy eye that needs treatment, so he wants to get a closer look. Okay, all right. Easier said than done. These cats haven't really been socialized to the humans, so their trust factor isn't the same as it is with the monkeys. And Dudus, who's kind of the monkey prince and protector of the felines, isn't having it. All right, Dudus. Dudu's gonna be very protective over the cat. <laughs> Dudu's, he's actually now showing dominance towards Bupa, and he's really showing to Bupa he must back off, otherwise he's gonna bite him any second. All right, Dudu's. All right, all right, all right. All right. Problem is, when he starts calling, then all the other monkeys come, and I'm a bit scared of them. Yeah, maybe Bupa should try again later. Once he exits, calm is restored, and the kitties reassured. Dudus is lip smacking the cat at the moment, so lip smacking just means a comfort noise, basically telling him everything is all right, and he doesn't have to worry, nobody's gonna hurt him. It's really stunning to know that there's a bond formed between these guys that a human cannot get between it. And every time a human tries to touch that cat, those monkeys are gonna go crazy protecting that cat because they are part of their family. It's just amazing to see how a relationship can be built between two species. This is Horace, a vervet monkey who spent the past five years at Twala Trust Animal Sanctuary. He has literally got an entire sanctuary of wilderness at his disposal and every day for him is like his best day. Horace has it made out here, but his story truly begins with tragedy. His mum had been killed by a vehicle on a busy road and he's just so lucky that the right person came along. Um, 
rescued him. Horace was just two days old when the accident happened. He was tiny. We call baby monkeys pink faces. They have these little scrunched up pink faces. And when you see that pink face, you know that you're dealing with a really, really little baby. Horace needed round the clock care and heaps of love. Even Freddy the cat had his back. See, video evidence. You can't make this stuff up. The sanctuary is typically a place for injured animals to recuperate and get back on their feet. And while the initial plan was to watch this orphan tag along with a troop of his own kind, well, plans change. He got electrocuted. He uh, strayed off the property and got onto an electric transformer. It was very, very seriously injured. It almost killed him. Sadly, one arm had to be amputated. And the other arm is also damaged from that incident. We were very concerned about um, this disability for him and how it would affect his, his life. After his injury, Horace became a permanent resident at the sanctuary. He's adapted incredibly well to just having one arm. Obviously, he's not as agile as he would be if he had all his limbs. He's just taught himself how to do everything that any monkey would do. It just takes him a little bit more effort and a little bit more thought. Horace finds creative ways to make do. I would say Horace's favorite food is a tie between bananas and then anything that he can steal. He is a notorious thief. <laughs> He's a crafty one, all right. Sadly for Horace, his injury will prevent him from joining a troop. His food finding capabilities would be limited and he could easily fall victim to a predator. Not to mention, growing up without a mom, he has no clue about the dynamics of navigating vervet monkey society. Monkeys do operate within a troop with uh, dominance is, is very important to them. And they can be extremely aggressive to monkeys that they don't know. To get on, Horace needs friends. Turned away by his own kind, he turns toward the other residents at the sanctuary like these dogs. But having endured their own trauma, these guys are not the warmest of roommates. We have a lot of dogs that have been kept as security dogs, so they go through quite brutal training for that, often have pretty major psychological problems. And obviously they are chosen as security dogs because they're aggressive. In Africa, vervet monkeys like Horus are seen as pests, and dogs are often encouraged to destroy them. How does Horace find an in with them? Well, we mentioned he was creative. While the other dogs are unwelcoming off the bat, old Isabel here seems cool. She could be a good first friend to make. Horace plays to his strengths using his signature grooming techniques to win her over. In a monkey troop, Grooming one another builds bonds and strengthens alliances. Apparently, it's a hit with the other pups, too. All of a sudden, Horace is in doggy demand. He's very, very clever at working out the different personalities and what he can and cannot get away with. He's trying to work out the psychology of that pack because he is trying to integrate himself into the pack. Horace's services have finally awarded him membership into their club. He is incredibly gentle with them, and it's really touching to see how he will judge that a dog's not feeling well or that maybe a dog is anxious. And often he'll actually lie down with them and have a nap with them, and it's almost like he feels this dog needs, needs special attention and special care, and I, I, I want to make them feel better. He's taught me and everybody here how important it is just to persevere and to be resilient. Whatever life has thrown at him, he's dealt with it and he makes the most of every single day. And I think that's probably a good lesson for all of us.